In this video, we're going to be learning how to draw simple shapes in Adobe Photoshop using the pen tool. So welcome back to my design class where we learn all sorts of different Photoshop techniques. So today we're going to be focusing on how we can actually draw simple shapes by using the pen tool. So the pen tool is something that I use on a very regular basis. It's handy for all sorts of different things. It's a tool that allows us to draw all sorts of very complex shapes. And the other bonus is that it also uses vectors. So instead of actually drawing out pixels, what we're going to be doing is actually drawing vectors. So vectors in Photoshop are called paths, and this can be found on the right hand side of the layers panel here. As you can see, there's a small paths tab, and this is where we're actually going to start drawing our shape. So let's start by actually finding the pen tool. So the pen tool is on the left hand toolbar just above the type tool. And as you can see, the shortcut to the pen tool is P. So if I just hold on that with my left mouse key, as you can see, there are a whole variety of different pen tools available. We're going to be just covering the pen tool, the basic pen tool at the top in this video. But in the future, I will also make videos covering these last tools. So let's start by selecting the pen tool. Now, in order to actually draw something with the pen tool, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is basically create different points and Photoshop will actually connect those points up with lines. So as you can see, I'm just pressing once in all sorts of different areas. And as you can see, lines are being drawn to connect those dots. If I just quickly undo that by pressing Command and Z on my keyboard, or well, that's Control and Z for Windows. Now in order to create curves using the pen tool, it's very similar, but all you have to do is hold onto your left mouse key once you've created the initial point. And as you can see, if I drag to the left or the right, you can see that this line appears and this basically allows us to draw curves. So if I just leave this going in this direction, the curve will start in the direction of where you released your cursor. So if I now make another pointer perhaps here, I'm not letting go of my left mouse key quite yet. If I hold and drag it in a different direction, as you can see, I can now actually manipulate this curve going in all sorts of different directions. So it starts in the direction of where you last released your first cursor, and then it continues until it reaches the second point that you've drawn. And you can control these curves using these two dots here. Now, if you want to be able to edit these points whilst having the pen tool selected, all you have to do is hold command, or that will be control for windows on your keyboard. As you can see, your cursor changes and you can now actually select these pointers. So you can even go back to the first one and actually edit that too. Now, obviously the next line is actually going to continue going in the direction of this second dot. So if I now draw another point, perhaps here and hold and drag, as you can see, there's now going to be a curve between these two and it's always gonna go in the direction of the next point. So for example, I could draw one going this way and so forth. So you can draw all sorts of very cool shapes just by using these techniques. Now in order to actually complete a path, all you have to do is go back to the original dot. As you can see, when you have your cursor hovering over it, there's a small circle that appears in the bottom right hand corner. And this basically means that you can complete your path and now we've created a shape. So now that we actually know the fundamentals of how to draw a path using the pen tool, let's actually try and recreate this anchor that I drew earlier using the path tool. So I'm just gonna quickly get rid of this path. So as you can see under the paths panel on the right hand side here, we now have a work path. And this is the path that we've now drawn just here as the example. Now this won't actually automatically save if you leave it as a work path. In order to save it, what you have to do is hold and drag on work path, go to the very bottom, where there's a similar symbol to how you create new layers, drop it on that, and as you can see, it's now named path one. So this is now a save path that won't actually be deleted. So I'm just gonna actually delete this path because we don't want to have this one. So I'm just gonna hold and drag it to the trash can at the bottom. And now I can actually create a path in advance just by pressing on this new path icon. As you can see, a path has been created. I could even be more organized and actually rename that. So we know what we're actually drawing. And now we're all set to actually go ahead and draw our shape. So when I start drawing a shape, I always like to actually start at the regular edges and then use the curves later. So I'm just gonna create a dot here in one of the corners. And now all I have to do is go to the bottom here and then select the next point. And then it's gonna draw a line between these two dots. I could even hold shift on my keyboard in order to keep it parallel to the vertical axis. And as you can see, when I've created this dot, it's now coming in a straight line to this point. I can now go to the next point here and actually just create a new dot here, and it's gonna complete this. 
As you can see, I haven't quite followed the lines. So in order to edit this point, I can just hold Command or Control for Windows once again, and just quickly reposition that point just so it fits nicely along our line. I can then go ahead and select the last point that we have and continue. So I could go here next and then keep going until I reach the bottom. So probably about here because I think the curve starts slightly here. Now I'm not actually going to be too precise, but you can zoom in by pressing Command and Plus on your keyboard or Control and Plus for Windows in order to actually go and fine tune all of these edges. You can also use the hand tool for which the shortcut is H on your keyboard in order to reposition our viewpoint so we can actually focus on this bottom bit here. And then I'm going to quickly go back to pen tool by pressing P on my keyboard. That's both for Windows and Mac, by the way. And now we can continue with our path. So this is where the first curve is going to come into play. So I'm probably going to go slightly further to here and create the first curve. As you can see, I'm trying to make sure that it aligns on both dots. And something like that looks correct to me. We can then move slightly further ahead and create the next dot. So we could go slightly here. Now, as you can see, I had to draw this line out quite far in order to actually make it fit this curve. But I know in advance that this is already going to be a problem because if I create a new dot here, it's actually going to overextend the line because this line is so long. So if I quickly undo that by pressing Command and Z and just hold Command on my keyboard or Control for Windows, I can actually go ahead and decrease that size in advance so I know it's going to stick to this curve slightly better. So if I now create a point, as you can see, it fits slightly better. I could actually press Command again and just resize it slightly more and then maybe extend this point just to fit the curve slightly better. I can then continue and perhaps create a new point here. And as you can see, that fits quite well. I might actually also just readjust this one here in order to get that curve even better. So as you can see, it is in part just slightly playing around and seeing what works in order to fit your drawing. Obviously, if you haven't got a drawing in Photoshop already, then you can also just freeform this. You don't actually have to be following a template like I am. So I'm just going to quickly select the last dot again. You've always got to make sure you have the last dot selected so that you're actually continuing from that point. So I'm just going to go slightly further up here, maybe create a small curve because this is slightly a curve and then do the same on this side and then continue down. And as you can see, once you get quite used to it, you can actually go through all of these stages quite quickly and it becomes quite an intuitive way of actually drawing shapes in Photoshop. So I can maybe create another one here. As you can see, it doesn't matter how many dots you make as long as you're sticking to the design that you want to create. So you can literally create as many dots as you want. So as you can see here, there's a slight struggle because this line is actually still slightly to the left of the line that I drew. So if I press command once again, I can actually extend this one slightly further just to make it match a bit better. And I might actually also just angle that a bit more. And then I can continue just making sure I have that selected and continue so forth. And once I've actually reached the end of my viewpoint, I'll just press on the hand tool once more using the shortcut H and just reposition my viewpoint so I can see a bit more. Now, another thing is if you accidentally overextend, so let's say I actually create a dot out here and I actually wanted it to be here. You can obviously reposition the dot or if you really want to undo it, you can just press backspace or delete on your keyboard. And as you can see, it will also delete that dot and you can just continue from where you started. Now, if at any stage you've actually unselected your path. So, for example, if I just go to the paths panel here and just press off our layer, as you can see, we can no longer see the path. So if this is the case, all you have to do is go back to the paths panel. If you can't see the paths panel, by the way, just go to window and make sure there is a tick next to paths. And then once there's a tick next to it, you should be able to see the paths. So as you can see at the moment, I can't actually see my path. So I've just got to make sure I press on the anchor layer. And as you can see, I can now continue. So I haven't actually got the path itself selected. So in order to actually edit it, just go to the end of your path. And as you can see, the cursor changes with a small box with two lines just slightly to the right of it. 
just press once and now we've selected it once again. So we can now just go ahead and continue all the way around this anchor. So now as you can see, I've actually reached the end of this bottom section. And we know from before that the top section is slightly more regular. So if I just press command and minus to zoom out a bit, or if that's control and minus for windows, then once again, I don't actually have to create curves. I can just press single dots. So I can hold shift in order to keep it parallel to the vertical axis once again. And as you can see, I can just continue slightly further along. I might actually add this second line at a slight angle like we have here just to keep it slightly unique. And I'll try and match it up with the bottom here, so maybe slightly further, and then go back up to the top. So now we've got to create another few curves in order to create the top section. So I'll just quickly zoom back in, move the hand tool to reposition our view. And as you can see, I can now go ahead and actually create this. So. So as you can see, I can now go ahead and actually complete the selection. So I can just press on the last one and then go to the very first point that we created and just press once. I can even drag it out slightly just to create that curve. And then as you can see, we now completed the outer edge of our selection. So once this is complete, we can actually also create this middle circle. So I can just go ahead and press again. And as you can see, you can actually have multiple paths in one path layer. And I can just go ahead and create a few paths in order to create this top circle section, like so. Now obviously one of the things we will recognize immediately is that it does look slightly different once we actually hide the background layer. All of these edges aren't quite regular, and for example the spacing isn't quite right between all of these edges, but I trust that when you actually go ahead and do your own designs, you can actually go ahead and make that a bit more precise. But for the purpose of this tutorial, this will be fine for now. I might just actually readjust these two points. So I can actually select multiple points just by holding shift and command at the same time or control and shift windows at the same time. As you can see, I've created a selection of both of these dots and I can actually just realign it using that just so it matches the bottom here. Great, so let's go ahead and actually hide the background layer. So in order to do that, if we just go to the layers panel and then press on the eye next to the image layer, as you can see, that's now hidden the background. I'll press Command and Zero or Control and Zero for Windows in order to zoom out to see my entire canvas, like so. So as you can see, this is the path that we've been left with. It does look slightly irregular and odd at the top here because they're slightly different in size and everything, but for now, it's fine. We can always go ahead and fine tune that later. So how can we actually go ahead and fill the shape in or create an outline so we can actually use this in our designs? So first of all, Let's create a new layer. So with the layers panel selected, all we have to do is go to this button at the bottom to create a new layer. And once again, we can stay nice and organized. So I'll rename it to anchor and just press off it to confirm that choice. So next, what we can do is go to the paths panel here on the right. Make sure that the correct path is selected. We can actually go to the top here and you can see there's a few parameters. So you can actually make a selection from your path. So for example, if I press on that, it'll actually go ahead and create this small selection box. I'm happy with all of these choices. Press OK. We now have a selection of our path. As you see, I can get rid of the path just by deselecting that layer. But say we don't want to actually do that, if I just press Command and Z to bring back our path, we can also create a mask. I'll go into masks in a different video, so I'll skip that for now. But it is handy to know that you can do that from here. And the last thing we can do is create a shape. So if we just press on that, as you can see, it has now actually filled in our entire anchor, but it might not be the color that we actually want. So that is one way of creating a shape. So we can just deselect the path. And as you can see, we now have the shape. It's a slightly unfortunate color. We could have actually corrected that by creating a foreground color to start with, but I'll actually show you another way of also doing this. So you know that this is an option. I'm going to quickly press Command and Z just to bring it back our shape. So let's set the white background color to our foreground color. We can do that by pressing X on our keyboard so we actually can see our anchor in the next version. Then another way of being able to achieve this is actually being on the paths panel with the anchor path selected. 
Also make sure in the layers panel you have the correct layer selected, otherwise this won't work. Go back to the past panel. At the bottom we have a few small symbols here. So these allow us to do different things with our path. So the first one is to fill in our path with a certain color. So if I just press on that, as you can see, it will fill in our entire path. As you can see, it hasn't cut out the top section because it doesn't actually realize it is a shape. So this is one drawback of doing this this way. Obviously you could press on the shape one first and it will actually create a new path. So just to demonstrate that, if I press Command and Z and press on the shape here, as you can see, it has now filled it in in white and it's actually created an entire new path, recognizing that that top bit is something that's supposed to be cut out. So if I just quickly go to the layers and as you can see, it's changed this to a shape layer. If I quickly hide that and create a new layer, just like we had, and let's call this anchor two. And then go back to the paths and have our path selected. The next option that we have is to actually stroke our path, which is basically create an outline. So if I press on that, as you can see, it's now created an outline using the brush tool. So whatever brush you currently have set using the brush tool, it will use that brush and create an outline of your entire shape. So that's an easy way to create an outline from your path. Now, the last thing you can also do is this last option, which is create a selection. So that was just like the one at the top. And now we've actually got a selection of our path. So those were the fundamentals of how to use the pen tool to create paths in order to draw simple shapes in Adobe Photoshop. Do remember to leave a like on the video if you found this content useful. And also remember to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.